We're competing on a world stage these days. And to compete successfully on a world stage, you have to have a 21st century infrastructure. And you have to be sustainable. And that's what attracts new companies. That's what attracts the brightest minds to move to this area, to live here and work here, maybe to stay here after they come to college. Sustainable infrastructure means many things. It means more transit. It means people are able to get around more frequently without their cars. It means that people bike and walk more, which is good for health as well as for the environment. We're not just talking about roads and bridges. We're talking about social infrastructure as well as physical infrastructure. We're going to be undergoing tremendous demographic change in Greater Boston and in the Commonwealth over the next decade. The hundreds and hundreds of thousands of baby boomers are going to be reaching retirement age. And there's a fairly young cohort coming behind them. We have immigrants coming into the city. We have obviously major changes occurring in demographics. How we transcend through that period and come out even more prosperous than we are today and do it in a way so that we share that prosperity more equitably is really what the agenda is all about. Infrastructure jobs have immediate benefits right here. You cannot build a bridge in Quincy in Beijing. If you're going to build a bridge in Quincy, you've got to build it right there. It's one of those kinds of things that I think creates jobs across the board. Not only are there sort of relatively low-skilled jobs, i.e. jobs that don't require you know, a PhD in fluid mechanics, but at the other end of it, there are jobs for engineers, there are jobs for people who are PhDs in fluid mechanics. When they filled the Back Bay, that was a bold idea. When we extended the Southwest Corridor Orange Line, that was a bold idea. The Central Artery, for all of its uh, fits and spurts, was a bold idea. Route 128 was a bold idea. Where's the next one?